With Flight 7 just around the corner, the space community is eagerly anticipating the debut of the Starship Block 2 hardware. While Block 1 has mastered soft landings, Block 2 promises to bring SpaceX closer to Starship's upper stage reusability, leading to the ultimate goal of full reusability of both stages. The journey begins with Ship 33, which features numerous redesigned and simplified systems, particularly the flaps, playing a vital role in controlling and guiding the vehicle during re-entry and landing. These flaps have been upgraded to be more reliable and robust, addressing issues that arose during previous flights. So, what specific changes has SpaceX implemented? Discover all the details in today's episode. Anyway, thank you for helping us reach 90,000 subscribers. Our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. The flaps of SpaceX's Starship rocket play a crucial role in controlling its aerodynamics during various flight phases, particularly during re-entry and landing. It consists of two components, forward flaps positioned on the payload bay and aft flaps located on the sides of the engine bay and LOX tank. In Starship Block 1, the old flap design clearly showed its shortcomings. Flight 4 marks the first time both booster and ship made them all the way to a soft landing in the ocean. This allows us to take a closer look at the performance of the flaps. During Ship 29 re-entered, plasma got into the portside forward flap hinge, nearly melting it off. Ship 30 in Flight 5, although has the heat shield fairing much better than Ship 29, still had some burn marks on the forward flaps. Then on Flight 6, SpaceX challenged Ship 31 even more by flying at higher angles of attack to test the limits of flap control and future landing configurations. Prior to launch, the flaps and flap fairings got the new ablative layer, and gap filler material was added to the flaps. As a result, there was once again a burn-through on at least one of the forward flaps of Ship 31. It's safe to say that the Block 1 flap design had a major weakness related to its ability to withstand extreme heat during re-entry. This indicates that while design upgrades have already proven beneficial, further refinements are still needed. That is where the second version comes in, which will incorporate more significant upgrades. So, what differentiates the Block 2 flap design from the previous design? Let's start off with the forward flaps. Beyond a space shuttle-style heat shield of blankets and ceramic tiles, the Starship upper stage is meant to achieve that reusability by descending through the atmosphere and landing unlike any other spacecraft, plane, or rocket ever flown. Instead of flying, gliding, or knifing through the atmosphere, nose or tail first, Starship freefalls perpendicular to the ground for the last few dozen kilometers before aggressively flipping into a vertical orientation at the last second and landing propulsively on its tail. Now, according to Elon Musk, two of the four flaps that largely make that exotic maneuver possible are set for a small but significant redesign. I'm so glad we finally fixed the forward flap design. The old one was killing me. It was too large and heavy, positioned at 180 degrees which caused issues during the high heating hypersonic phase of flight. The new design solves those problems. The new, smaller flap design is a game changer for Starship. These changes will not only improve maneuverability during flight, but also boost overall reliability. While the version 2 forward flap is significantly smaller, reducing the static aerodynamic demands that affect navigation and the critical flip maneuver during descent, this design minimizes the risk of damage during flight and simplifies manufacturing, which will increase operational flexibility. In Block 1, the forward flaps had a design where the lower edge ran parallel to the ground and was perpendicular to the outboard edge, creating a distinct 90-degree angle at the lower corner. In contrast, the new flaps have a much more swept shape compared to the Block 1 design and will no longer have the bottom edge parallel to the ground when deployed. 
Additionally, the new flaps appear thinner, which helps reduce dead weight. Both faces of the new flaps are parallel, simplifying the heat shield design significantly. In contrast, the old flaps had non-parallel faces due to their thicker construction near the hinge, tapering toward the outboard edge. This tapered design introduced additional complexity to the heat shield. All the way back in August of 2021, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk noted that there was a slight error with the forward flap design. While the moving section of the flap is essential for control, the passive section was deemed counterproductive as it pushed the nose of the spacecraft backward. This passive section comprises parts of the flap and a component called static arrow, which always extends from the ship, increasing drag. The static arrow serves to protect the hinge and fill the gap between the nose cone and the flap. This flap configuration adversely affected the spacecraft during descent, as it continuously attempted to lift the forward end, requiring compensation from the aft flaps. To address this issue, Musk suggested rotating the forward flaps to leeward and further forward to improve the moment arm, maybe roughly 120 degrees apart, and now the flaps are now situated about 120 to 140 degrees apart from each other, rather than the 180 degrees on the older design. It means it shifted higher and closer to the leeward side. This repositioning offers better protection during atmospheric re-entry, reducing the potential for damage like what was observed in Flight 4. As a result of these changes, the static aerodynamic system is largely shielded from airflow and when the flaps are retracted, they are almost completely hidden behind the nose tip. While the forward flaps have undergone significant redesigns, the structure of the aft flaps appears to remain unchanged, and the reasons for this are unclear. The aft flaps on Starship share many characteristics with the previous forward flap design. There is no discernible difference between the aft flaps of the older and updated ship models. They maintain the same shape and internal structure, indicating they are essentially carryovers from the previous generation. The aft flaps continue to be spaced 180 degrees apart. At this point, it seems SpaceX has chosen not to modify its design. The thickness and shape of these flaps have remained consistent. Like the former forward flap design, the aft flaps feature a tapered profile that narrows toward the outboard edge causing their two faces to be non-parallel, which contrasts with the new forward flaps. The flap design of SpaceX's Starship significantly differs from that of NASA's Space Shuttle. The shuttle features a vertical stabilizer with wings attached to the mid-fuselage, while SpaceX opts for a design without large wings to minimize dead weight and enhance safety and efficiency. The shuttle's oversized wings limit its capabilities, confining it primarily to low Earth orbit and hindering its potential for missions to Mars or the Moon. This design not only makes launches less efficient, but also increases the risk of debris collisions during ascent. SpaceX's approach focuses on creating a more streamlined spacecraft. The Starship employs body flaps that play a crucial role in controlling its trajectory, especially during landing. These flaps are designed to dissipate energy during atmospheric entry and are positioned to optimize performance. Unlike the shuttle, which relies on the lift generated by its wings for a gradual descent, Starship uses a high drag strategy, presenting its broadside to the airflow to slow down rapidly during re-entry. This design philosophy allows Starship to manage heat dissipation more effectively, reducing the risk of thermal damage. The differences in their re-entry mechanisms highlight the distinct operational goals of each spacecraft, with Starship prioritizing rapid deceleration over lift and glide capabilities. Overall, SpaceX's innovative flap design reflects its commitment to creating a fully reusable spacecraft capable of ambitious missions beyond low Earth orbit. To achieve the current flap design of Starship, SpaceX invested years in research, testing, and modifications, particularly evident during the dynamic early development phase when annual changes were common. 
In the initial 2017 design, known as the Big Falcon Ship ABFS, the upper stage featured a small delta wing at the rear with split flaps for pitch and roll control. This delta wing was intended to enhance the spacecraft's flight capabilities, allowing it to land in various atmospheric conditions, whether in a vacuum, thin atmosphere, or dense environment, thus enabling landings anywhere in the solar system. By 2018, this design evolved into what Elon Musk referred to as the final version of SpaceX's Big Falcon rocket. The updated model replaced the single delta wing with three larger wings, two actuated aft fins and one landing pad. Additionally, it included two forward actuated flaps. The forward fins were positioned near the nose to aid in steering, slowing down, and stabilizing the spacecraft during atmospheric entry. The aft wings not only facilitated flight on Earth and Mars, but also served as landing pads, moving away from previous designs that featured pop-out landing legs. This iteration could accommodate a significant amount of cargo, equivalent to a double-decker bus, for easier access post-landing. The evolution continued into 2019, when further redesigns reduced the number of aft flaps from three to two, primarily driven by concerns about vehicle mass. Musk noted that this change was based on analyses suggesting that two rear fins with separate airframe-mounted legs would be lighter. The design also included smaller fins at the top of the vehicle for added control, with features like forward movable fins and cold gas attitude control thrusters aimed at balancing the mass of the Raptor engines and fins at the base. Since then, the number and structure of flaps have been mostly maintained except for the fact that SpaceX only made a few tiny changes for Starship version 2, as we stated. Similar to any other part of Starship, the flap design development process was based on an iterative approach. This methodology emphasizes rapid prototyping, allowing SpaceX to quickly build, test, and refine each version of the spacecraft. By embracing a cycle of build, test, analyze, improve, the company can swiftly identify flaws and implement necessary changes based on real-world data, rather than relying solely on theoretical models. This approach contrasts sharply with traditional aerospace practices that often involve extensive upfront planning and lengthy development timelines. Over the years, SpaceX has produced multiple prototypes of Starship, each serving as a learning platform for subsequent iterations. The iterative process not only accelerates development, but also enhances cost efficiency by reducing the man hours required to address issues as they arise. Moreover, this flexibility allows SpaceX to adapt designs in response to test results, ensuring that each iteration is better suited for its intended mission. The iterative design strategy has proven particularly effective in addressing challenges associated with developing a fully reusable spacecraft capable of interplanetary travel. As a result, Starship is on track to revolutionize space travel by making it more accessible and sustainable. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.